job this morning is just to give you an overview of what we've been working on, um, and then give you an opportunity to ask any questions you may have. Where we are, what we're up to. Um, currently, I'm in the role of a part-time project manager for the Berkshire County Education Task Force, um, but we um, otherwise we have basically a volunteer group that's been meeting since uh, 2015, which is about five, about five years now. Mm -hmm. um, our current chair is Bill Cameron, who's the interim superintendent. And Lennox, and our vice chair is Andrea Wadsworth, who's the assistant superintendent at Greylock, chair of the school committee in Lee. Uh, otherwise, we have um, a smattering of folks from across the county who've been coming and going from the task force over the time of our um, existence. I think the only person who's on the committee, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, is Peter Gillen, who's in this room right now, who's also on the task force. Is that correct? Are you on the task force? Okay, so you are. Right. Funny. You're on as it's connected to Richmond, right? Richmond, yeah. Hancock, and New Ashford. Gotcha. Not Hancock. in my role in Berkshire Hills. All right. So um, I'll try to keep this as concise as I can. I brought some papers to give you just to give you an overview. But um, we've been on a journey since 2015, and um, we actually convened <coughs> early out of, out of work that was happening in Central Berkshire Regional Schools. Um, I actually live in Dalton, so I was asked to be on that committee. Bill Cameron was the superintendent at the time. And they were struggling with, um, obviously, money on uh, trying to figure out whether they were going to keep all their schools open. They ended up closing the school, as many of you are aware. Um, but that group came together and had two subcommittees that worked at, on internal organization of the district and then external relationships with neighboring um, districts to see whether there were any solutions. Um, I was on the external committee, and what we came to realize was that um, this conversation was better had with more districts at the table. And so that external group led to the formation of the Berkshire County Education Task Force, just so you know how we got to where we are today. Um, early on, our work was just kind of figuring out what was going on. You know, we came to the table uh, primarily um, for, some, for probably the same reasons you are. Um, it was money and numbers. And so um, how are we going to pay the bills? And enrollment is declining um, dramatically. We've shifted our language around how we're um, talking about the work now to talk about educational quality as the primary driver. And we know educational quality is going to be influenced by money and numbers, um, but we really want that to be front and center in the work that we're doing. So we're really focused on the experience that our, our, our students are having and ultimately um, how we build systems and create partnerships that in, enhance that and increase that. Um, but, but um, you know, again, just to be really um, honest with you all, the, the numbers brought us to the table and continue to drive us forward. Um, we've gone through kind of three phases, and we're in, I, I described the third phase. Our first phase was really, again, setting the context, and a lot of that was verifying the enrollment numbers and enrollment projections. And so we had a report that was produced by the Berkshire County uh, Regional Planning Commission, um, which has been, um, revisited and updated twice. It's about to be released um, for the third time um, with updated projections. And so I expect that's gonna be out within the next week. Um, and the projections are holding. Um, the last round of projections were, was within three tenths of a percent of what they had predicted uh, two years ago. Um, so if you were that accurate in anything in life, you'd, you'd probably <laughs> be sitting at this table. Um, the uh, enrollment from two years prior to that, which had been based on a two-year window, was within nine students of 15,000. Um, yes. right. Now keep in mind that there are ups and downs between districts, and districts will react accordingly. A lot of that is um, movement between districts, and some of that is greatly attributed to choice and just patterns of students moving between the various districts. Um, the new enrollment projections um, actually um, were a little we actually have more students than they had predicted by 55. Again, smattered across the county. The problem, however, is that the new projection line appears to be a little bit of a steeper decline into the future than they had predicted two years ago. And that's primarily based on birth rates. Um, so we're looking at birth rates and then projecting that forward. Um, and again, there's, there's, there's um, winners, and I shouldn't say winners and losers, everyone is basically declining, but um, anyway. So enrollment for us to the table, just to confirm, we had a, we did a phase one study with the Donahue Institute, 
and they used three different methodologies to confirm the enrollment number, and they all um, said that basically the same thing. So that phase one study by Donahue is actually online at our website. You're welcome to read it. I could even just send uh, the chair uh, the report, and he, uh, she can distribute it to you all. This is all public information, and we're happy to do that. And as soon as the Regional Planning Commission's report is updated, we'll also have a press release on that, too. So phase two is what are we going to do about it, you know, and how do we begin to think about different scenarios. Uh, we ended up going uh, contracting with a, uh, a group called District Management Council, which is now called District Management Group. Uh, they do work around the nation. Um, they were involved in some of the main work, some of the Vermont work. And uh, Carla Bear, who's the former Deputy Commission, Commissioner of the Department of Education, who's now retired, one of their um, principals, and so we engaged them in a, about a year-long study to look at scenarios. We ran five scenarios, and the scenarios were what would happen if we did nothing in the county? That was scenario one, and on the other extreme, scenario five was what would happen if we became a single Berkshire County School District. In between, there were some variations, like what would happen if we organized by South Central North, what would happen if we did something called a, super, uh, a modified supervisory union, which is a supervisory union with some rule changes, what would happen if we created some partnerships. We evaluated all that on educational outcome, how hard it was to do, um, to some degree political ramifications, um, and we came to the conclusion, the aspiration, that we thought the best way forward would, would be to um, move towards a single Berkshire County school. And we came up with that recommendation aspiration about two years ago in the summer. And that's kind of where things blew up, to be honest with you. Right? <laughs> <Some Asian. laughs> um, so since that moment, um, we've been regrouping to kind of think through this. Um, and I think part of the problem was we hadn't gone far enough under the hood into the detail to really tell the story of what the educational gains were and what the real financial implications to each community, community by community, would be. We didn't necessarily have a road map. So um, that's what we're working on right now, is the road map. Um, now, understand that um, we, keep, we keep options on the table. Some people say, why didn't you just go with the sub-regional? That seems more digestible, right? The South Central North. Um, when we did the X's and O's, we I think what we decided was that the complexities to getting to three subregions um, were equal to the complexities of getting to a single Berkshire County district. Uh, and so while you might hold some things at bay with the sub-regional you know, um, alignment, that likely some of those things would catch up too over time. Um, and so why not go at the full Berkshire County? And then we also thought there were really some unique opportunities around the branding of our region. All this is being driven by population loss, right? And so the idea of how do we draw folks into the county to wanna live, work, and play here, and raise their families here. Um, and so there were some interesting comments that came out of um, folks at the table who were more involved in business and economic development, workforce development, uh, around that particular thing. So anyways, um, that's, if you're looking for just a quick rationale as to why we did the single versus the three, that's it. So um, what we're doing now is um, we've been able, we actually pitched to a plan to the Department of Ed, a five-year plan um, that covers a bunch of domains and the domain, the working domains are things like educational quality, understanding what's happening, financial implications, um, legal and legislative, um, you know, um, nuances and, and requirements, um, logistics, just how we move people around, um, all things related to contracts. We have a domain on governance, which we know is a, another um, very challenging part of this, um, probably one of the more challenging parts. Um, so anyways, we're, we're, we're tackling the work so much sequentially. And so this year, um, just to get to the point, um, we're working primarily on two things with two supporting things. So the two items we are working on this year is educational quality and finance, and that's it. Now, um, we're not gonna get heavy into the governance this year. We're not gonna get heavy into the legislative and legal 
um, analyses of what we need to do. There may be some trickle into those two topics. Um, if we're talking about financial reconfiguration and in order for something financially to work, let's say transportation for example, we need guarantees of legislation that guarantees that we will have transportation reimbursement um, along regional models um, in this reconfiguration, um, that may be something we add in uh, to the model. But we're really focused on educational quality um, first, which is going to be benchmarking um, to the degree we can do that um, of what's happening in all the schools right now, all the districts and all the schools. Um, and so that's um, what kinds of programs are occurring, um, what are the outcomes, um, you know, what are uh, staffing levels, uh, what kinds of services and supports are offered in each of these schools. And some of that information is, is relatively publicly available. Some of it is actually hidden behind a secret door at the, um, at the Department of Education. Um, the, the schools, as Peter will tell you, um, and Beth will tell you, file an inordinate number of reports. <coughs> and, um, and that is captured somewhere. You just have to be able to get at it. And we're actually working with someone at the department who is helping us to get at it. And that, that will get us, an, us another step further, but it still won't get us all the way because as we know, there are nuances to what actually happens in school. And so some of this will actually be site verification, talking with folks from the schools and trying to, again, shore up that what the data says is accurate in the schools. All right, so we're hoping to do some benchmarking by around July 1 and then start to imagine reconfigurations and how ed quality would be moved for the second half of this year. Um, and then on the finance side, it's everything you might imagine from trying to begin to um, examine the financial implications um, for how reconfiguration would occur. Um, a, you have to answer the question, what's, what's it gonna cost? Um, B, uh, once you figure out what the cost, is that less or more or the same? Um, if it's less, do we wanna use the money to reinvest in educational quality? Or do we want to pass the savings back on to the towns and communities? We've got to deal with issues of debt now. Um, in the time that we've been in existence, I think four high school projects have been um, on the docket. So Taconic, Greylock, Wakona now passed, and I know that Berkshire Hills has been working on a project. So those are all things that have happened in five years in the county. And so now that debt creates an additional set of constraints and financial constraints that we're all going to have figure out how to work through. Um, so those are some of the things we're doing in finance. The third thing we're gonna be working on is um, a little bit more public outreach. Um, so we've been a little quiet, and so we're working on, um, we're gonna be doing community meetings, uh, trying to do some focus groups, um, probably putting together some sort of survey <coughs> to get at what people are thinking and feeling, um, and then give people a chance, hopefully to give us information about, um, you know, um, Again, the potential to do all this. Um, and then finally, um, one of the things we know is that um, we will not go from where we are now to any aspirations, whether it's three regions, a partnership, or a single region overnight. Um, and so we're very interested in incentivizing um, in, you know, innovative pilot projects across the region. So we actually have we've set aside around $20,000 of our money to put out to the districts to basically experiment. Are there particular things that you all might want to do in the next year that could begin to look at a particular element of a partnership with another district? Uh, so Central Berkshire, um, right now they're grappling with their regional agreement and they want some support on that. You know, the Clarksburg and Stamford of the North County have this interesting uh, cross state line conversation going on. But it also may be things like, you know, how do we consolidate IT systems or back office systems or share a school psychology? I don't know, I mean, there may be some other options that we can't imagine that we definitely want to incentivize that and, and just encourage people to, uh, to dig in that way, so. So that's about where we're at. Um, you know, we are hiring some people, um, so they're, they hired me obviously to do more of the admin and the management. I thought I would be doing a little bit more research, um, and I probably will hopefully get to some of that, because it's certainly something I'm very interested in.
but we also are pulling some folks in from the state. Um, we've got uh, a fellow come in, coming in who, if you, if you look at the, we've done a lit, literature bi bibliography, which I'm, again, happy to send along. It's about 20 pages, just sources of where there are already reports written that relate to regionalization. And many have been done in this region. I mean, now I've, when I sat in the chair at Lee, I found a stack that I, I didn't realize how many times we've had this discussion around <laughs> partnerships and regionalization. So some of that I'm trying to digitize and capture because I think there's a lot of lessons learned that you can draw from that and hopefully apply into the work that we're doing. Um, we've made some great partners with the state. Um, we're looking at um, organizations that are doing this. Massachusetts Regional Schools is heavily into it. Um, District Management Group, Public Consulting Group, a couple of the UMasses are working on uh, some of the issues related to it. So trying to pull as many folks in as we can. So I I think that's the summary, um, and hopefully that wasn't too painful. Um, I wanted just to give you a couple of pieces of paper you can walk away with, and I tend to be a little bit of a paper guy, so <laughs> if you um, would prefer electronic versions, I am more than happy to give you this. But this is, in effect, our attempt, my attempt at capturing everything we've done and are doing on a single double-sided piece of paper, <laughs> what we call on a page. And, um, you can just use this to the degree that you want to. Um, the, uh, yeah, the second thing I'll give you is, um, uh, as I, I didn't mention this, but I heard your conversation about how you're organizing as a group, and we've gone through that same kind of growing thing, trying to figure out how to organize. We are organized now into an executive committee, so we have the full committee, and we have an executive committee, which I think is around seven people, um, and then we have three subcommittees. We have a subcommittee working on educational quality, one working on finance, and one working on public outreach, which are directly aligned, aligned with our research area this year. Our chairs of our subcommittees are also on the executive committee. So we put the chair on the executive, on the subcommittee, on the executive committee, so we create this kind of communication uh, pathway which hopefully um, smooth things out. So anyway, here are the descriptions of our subcommittees if you're interested. Um, I just wanted you to have them. We are really giving away anything that we've done. So um, if you know, we, I recognize that um, <laughs> there is no magic formula to getting this work done. It's incredibly hard and complicated. Um, I won't bother giving you this. We're doing a call for volunteers too. I've learned from a couple of the regions that they've had some great volunteer help um, where folks are either retired or they're working in higher ed and they want to do research. And so um, we are going to do a call for that and I, I'm hoping that maybe that'll be Oh, Canada. Okay. Any, any models are great. Yeah, all right, well this is just, yeah, we have. And then the last thing I'm realizing, I I'm, don't have enough copy, I spoke to the town managers earlier this week um, of course, we're trying to get to as many groups as we can just to keep them aware. But this is the actual RFP for the collaborative projects I talked to you about before. I only have 12 copies, so I think this has been sent to every school committee member and um, select boards across the county. But again, I'll we'll just send it to you at the ACN. So, thank you. Thank you. And the superintendents have received it too. Okay, so how about the superintendent? I can just here. make more copies. Really? Yeah, one of them. Oh, God. Pat, <laughs> what a brilliant idea, Peter. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I want to yeah. be mindful of time, but I, I would like to open up the floor briefly to questions, and I'd like to start with one. Sure. How do you see the work we plan to do here, either fitting or not fitting? Yeah, I, I think it's all aligned, um, meaning that, uh, first of all, I, I'm glad to be invited here today because it would make sense if we're each doing research projects for us to be sharing information or resources. So we're going to be, our ed quality is not limited to part of the county, it's the entire county. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of that stuff that comes out of that, I think I should be feeding to you all um, to use as you see fit. So, um, that's one way. Um, I think clearly communicating on what you're working on, or if there are consultants 
you're using or doing particular functions or models, um, that would be useful. Um, as far as um, sort of philosophies or directions, um, it's probably good for us just to be honest with each other on what we're working on. Um, I have to be honest with you, as a researcher, I don't know for sure that the single district model is going to pan out as the best one. I want to go in with an open mind saying, this is the research model that we're, that we're doing, but it may prove um, too complicated, not value-driven enough to actually um, be argued for. We have to see. Jake, I know a little bit about your work, and can you share a little bit more about the Portraits of a Graduate oh, sorry. effort that is underway as well? Thank you. <laughs> Peter just bailed me out. If I left without doing this, I would be in big trouble. <laughs> so we have, um, one of the things that we've done in the last year is um, obviously apply for different funding streams, and we applied, uh, we got a planning, right now our funding is Regionalization money, which you all have, same bucket of money. We have $100,000. We got $50,000 through the earmark for Senator Hines. We got $50,000 from the Bar Foundation for uh, planning work. So we have a $200,000 operational budget to do this work this year. In addition to that, we applied for a really big Bar Foundation portrait of a graduate the high school grant. And we want it. It's a $250,000 grant. That grant is looking specifically at the high school experience uh, in five target high schools. They are um, Lee High School, Pittsville High, Taconic, uh, Drury, and a Bark Charter School. So those are our five schools in the grant. You might ask, why are those the five schools? They are the five schools primarily because they hit the threshold of free and reduced lunch students, high needs students. The only uh, school that wasn't included that met that threshold was uh, Hoosick, and the reason Hoosick didn't get in is because they were in a double transition of superintendent and we couldn't get a signature on the grant. Um, and then Lee actually didn't make the threshold, but I was sitting in the chair, so we <laughs> aggregated the data and we got him in. <laughs> but, so, yeah. so anyways, that particular grant is a year-long grant. We have um, teams of 12 people at each high school, and it is a visioning exercise. It's asking really big questions around um, what is it that we want out of our high schools? Um, you know, um, what are some of the contemporary uh, competencies, skills, and attitudes and experiences that we want kids to have? Um, we're looking at literature, we're doing school visits, um, and we're exchanging with each other and developing this portrait of a graduate, which we hope comes out. It's a very, it's a great project because I think it's linking districts with each other uh, in a very non-threatening way. It's really an opportunity to share um, now, I want to point out that um, Berkshire Hills Monument is actually ahead of the curve on this one. Uh, and so we're, we're kind of following them to some degree because you all had a grant that's been allowing you to do this work, I think, a year ahead, at least a year ahead of us. The best that gives grant. So you think it's the same money, like it's our money okay. through that organization, but we're doing the same thing. Right. So, um, and then the question is, why are other high schools at the table? Um, we, we actually hope we're doing a big summer convening and we're hoping to invite some of the other schools to the table to at least send representatives to learn more around what we're finding, um, what we're hearing, what we're thinking, and then maybe it stimulates them to potentially participate at a point down the road. But um, we're pretty excited about it. We're, um, again, going to be engaging a lot of folks from across the community because if you ask people, if you ask 100 people kind of what their definition of quality is or yes. what it is that they want out of a high school graduate, you get a lot of different answers um, depending on who you talk to. So uh, I think hopefully we'll, we'll mash all that up and, and come away with something that is useful to the region. Jake, in, in what you have um, so far from that, are there any ways so that we don't repeat things that we could either be visiting or have conclusions brought to us as we look at what we're going to do with our two districts? Because that yeah. seems pretty much the core of what one major aspect for us, sure. what we want to produce from our students. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so you're asking if we would share stuff and how we kind of keep you all Right, moved and in. how we could learn so we don't repeat mm -hmm. and go backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, Barr has a very 
a very specific strategy for doing this work now is that they don't want to overfeed groups with um, best models. They want actually models to be driven from the ground floor up. I think what they've done is had exemplar high schools where they came in and dropped in the model and it, it didn't stick. And so the idea is really, it's more around engagement and pulling from the ground up. But like you, I want to, um, we, we have um, this 15 person research team right now looking at a laundry list of literature and sort of exemplar practices. We're going to be visiting high schools, uh, both within driving distance and in some uh, in other parts of the country over the next six months. So I think what we pull away from that would absolutely be um, worthy of sharing and sharing. Just like I think we still have to get to Monument, and we haven't been there yet because they've done some of this work over the last year uh, in which they've done some of this outreach. I've sent some, um, you've sent some educators out to, I think, California, High Tech Hire, mm -hmm. wherever it was, Peter, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, but. yeah he did. Yeah. A bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jane, this um, touched on an issue um, that excites me about what we're about to do. Uh, because when we talked about it from the Southern Berkshire point of view, we have an opportunity to start something completely different. If we dissolve both districts and we, we're starting from scratch, actually. When you were saying, um, looking at educational quality, I think you're saying you're not just looking if we're checking the boxes that have been created already that may actually be outmoded and not the ones that work in our rural, very diverse culture, and that you are looking at new ideas. And these, the, the groups of people within districts, I'm imagining only are going from their own experience to base their ideas, but I'm assuming, talk to me about how this 15 person research group mm -hmm. is giving these discussion groups some new food for thought because I'd like to see how we would bring that into our district. Yeah, well actually we, uh, we have, a, we have a, a big meeting this coming Thursday which will be actually people bringing to the table um, their impressions of the research that they've been assigned. So I think we're still, um, I, I could probably report right after that meeting. No, that's great. In terms of what we're finding, but um, I do think it's that particular visioning process is really more around imagining possibilities without limitations um, and trying to agitate our thinking a little bit around maybe approaches that um, you wouldn't necessarily have considered otherwise. Um, that being said, I'm a defender of education in Berkshire County because I think there's some amazing, there's a lot of amazing things happening in this county across our high schools that each high school is not even completely aware of. They are doing, and so um, our first set of visits are going to be exchanges across our our county schools. Um, our second set of visits will be exchanges to high schools within driving distance. There's some interesting high schools in, in Providence and Boston and New York City, which we um, will will do. And then our third set of, of visits will be heading to some of the um, the big ticket high schools that have gotten some national recognition, just to be thinking about how are folks approaching this completely different. Now, not that we land all the way there, but there might be things we can pull away that, that then become part of our <coughs> I don't know if that completely answers your question. Jeff? Jeff? Uh, two questions. First, thanks for coming here and sharing. Well, um, you mentioned that you had pitched to Desi a five-year plan. Yeah. And just for the people who like to read, <laughs> yeah. is there a way that you could share that information? Sure, just yeah. to see what you're doing, if you yeah. could share that with Lucy to disseminate. And then um, my other question is, you said something early on about, you know, money brought you to the table to form the, the task force, but then you guys have made a shift in looking at educational outcomes. Right. Um, can you speak to the that evolution in the group to like, there's the impetus of coming, but why is it now being driven by different values and values? Yeah, I think, um, that's a really good question, and I'm trying to remember exactly when that shift happened. I mean, when we came to the table originally, it was uh, probably the last time the county went through uh, any kind of real stretched resource year. I shouldn't say that because I know every year is as a push, but um, but medical insurance has been held at bay for a few years right now, and so that was creating a massive pressure point in districts. Um, 
So there was no question that it was money that brought folks to the table and then that was supported by the enrollment. But I think the committee decided that um, in terms of pitching this idea and you know, ultimately we, the county task force has, we have zero influence. We're not, we're not even an informal body. We're just a bunch of volunteers who gets together um, and, uh, and is doing this research project. We think we'll have influence by making a compelling argument um, around what are the value propositions and, and, and additions that we get if we do these particular things. It's, it's really a basic if-then statement. Um, and so the value proposition, we believe, would be stronger if we led with impact for our kids. And I think that's ultimately what we're all in this for anyway. And if we demonstrate that we have the highest quality schools doing interesting things, um, won't that also be a, a stimulation for our region, um, both in sort of fueling what's happening here right now, but also um, you know, in the branding and the recruiting and the attracting side of it. But we also recognize that the money and the numbers are still um, foundationally uh, a big part of, of why we're doing this work. Um, I mean, we can make decisions, I think, to run incredibly small schools. You have to just ask yourself, how will that influence um, the, um, the experience of, of the children in the schools? And I'm not gonna argue that there aren't amazing small schools that do really interesting things and kids graduate from them and are incredibly successful, but it, it will limit and contain, I think, opportunities. And so, I don't know if that answers your question completely, but. Um, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, should thank you so much for the presentation. Yeah. Incredibly helpful, uh, terrific resource for us. And I, I look forward to our working closely together in the thank future. You. Thank you, yeah, and good luck. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really important set of tasks that you're on right now. It's, it's super hard, um, and I'd say just keep arguing each other in a positive and productive way and debating through things, and that's what we've been doing. But we've formed a, a really close bond among our members that I think um, are, are super committed to this work. So, all right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.